Dustin Young, Loam Roamer. Today, we're gonna talk about a Vorsprung smash pot and technical details, how it rides. I've had it across uh, two bikes. I've run it even on a mullet setup, which was pretty fun. I I'm got a couple years worth of experience with these and I can uh, start to tell you what to expect, what it feels like, how it works, and, and maybe even get into some technical stuff here today, okay? So, the Vorsprung Smash Pot. The replacement of your air spring system with a coil system that's built, I don't know, a little like a coil over fork on a car, the way they, they built it. It's, it's uh, all attached and encased into a system, okay? There is a hydraulic rod within it for hydraulic bottom out resistance. Um, and so that, that means that you get a pretty incredibly linear solution up to the point where you need it to have bottom out resistance because you don't wanna be slamming to the bottom all the time on big drops. It also has some progressivity naturally because air exists in the world and this is an entrapped chamber. Once you seal both ends of this shut, you trap what air was in there, that air is gonna compress no matter what. You do get the benefit of that for bottom out. It's such a limited amount that it won't provide enough resistance. Um, you don't have to overcome any, you're not adding air. You're not overcoming the air you're adding and the compression of that air, right? Because as it compresses, it compounds. The more air you put in, the higher the compression numbers to a point. So. Pretty cool system. One thing to note, it's not really reversible once you do it. So I've got my 36 on the Yeti right now, the SB150. It does have um, another Vorsprung product on it. I'll get into that another time. I do run this fork on it. I'm gonna tell you why, when and why I run this fork on that bike. I do love this fork, it's pretty spectacular. Also, I run this on the last generation 36. I've not run it on this generation of 36, so I can't really tell you uh, the difference. Um, I would think once you do this, you're getting rid of all their air chamber advantages and the grip two damper has changed a little bit from what I can see, but not much. So it's, it's probably not a big difference overall in performance. Hopefully there's some performance enhancement. All right. When you, when you go to a smash pot, one of the things you're gonna do is you're gonna gain up to, well, could be a little more than a pound, but let's call it a pound of weight. For me, with the spring weight I run, I like beer, um, I'm about a pound heavier than the fork was before. Now, it's not all unsprung weight. Um, it is some unsprung weight. Uh, I don't know what the percentage increase in unsprung weight it is. That would actually be something worth checking out. I think that'd be pretty cool to know. But um, some, some of the weight in the, I mean, it's attached at the top, so, Right, think about this is this right here, it doesn't move. It's not doing anything. Uh, this weight is not unsprung. This weight is unsprung. The wheel adds to the unsprung weight factor, okay? Why does unsprung weight matter? Real quick, I'll cover this base, because you're like, oh, since you said it, what the hell does that matter, and do, do I care? You don't really care. Um, I, I think people care because they can, not because they should or need to. Uh, if you're racing your bike, this might start to become an impact. If you're a cross country racer, I could see where you care. Um, when you are going downhill, I could see in certain situations, but for the most part, you probably wouldn't care. Uh, unsprung weight is essentially weight that moves, which impacts the performance of the suspension. It's, it's free to move, it's unsprung, okay? So um, for those of you who have way better knowledge about this than I do, go ahead and make comments, put in there what you think, or, or explain it better in the comments. I, I'm open to hearing more information about it. I'm trying to keep this really simple so that it's just something anybody can understand. So your wheel, your tire, um, all that stuff is unsprung weight. The size of the rotor you add adds more weight, it's unsprung weight, okay? Um, it also has to do with rotating mass and all these things that come into play in your bike. Where I think the pound should matter to you if you care about the pound is somewhere about mile 15 or 20 in your big mountain bike riding day. Uh, you're gonna start to notice it's there, but you're gonna notice heavy tires and all the other heavy parts you put on your big heavy enduro bike. It's going to start to get harder to pedal, but you're just getting tired and you're moving more mass. 
Simplest mass to remove, this mass, and you can move more of this mass for a longer period of time. So, uh, and this mass has a higher power to weight ratio than the removal of this mass. So I will tell you, uh, I'm a victim of my own beer drinking uh, lifestyle, but if you cut the weight off of you, it's a much, it's cheaper, and it's way better than trying to save weight on a bike because all the weight you save on a bike doesn't necessarily make the bike perform better. It just makes it easier potentially to pedal uphill and uh, you produce more power to weight than a bicycle produces no power to weight. It's just weight and you have to have the power to overcome it. All right, so sidetrack. Now let's get back on this thing. Why would you do this? Why would you put one of these on? Well. I've added a pound to my bike, but I've eliminated a whole lot of friction or stiction. All the seals that were previously in the air spring system are gone. I now just have this one oil retention seal, right? And the top cap. All the other seals are now eliminated that were in here. It's just a coil moving. That is always going to move better than all the little rubber seals that create stiction within, within the fork system. Now you still have the same stuff you have in a damper, but if you're running a grip two damper, they do a really good job of it in there. So that you're not eliminating. You're just eliminating pretty much the air side. This is not a bad thing. You're gonna notice it right away. That fork's gonna feel really smooth. Um, you're gonna notice it. You're gonna, your hands aren't gonna be as tired. The, it's gonna track the ground better. These things are unquestionable about the improvements that Smash Pop makes. If you like to manual a lot, you're gonna notice the weight a little bit you're, as you pick it up. It does change the weight bias of the bike because it's a pound way out on the front end of the bike. So you are gonna notice that, I did right away, but it didn't take long for me to compensate for that weight. And the other thing is it tends to uh, keep you from scooting back and bouncing the front end around. So hey, you're gonna keep that front wheel on the ground and get that front wheel traction that you may have been struggling to get. So maybe it'll help you there, who knows. Um, so let's get into some of the technical stuff of a, of a smash pot. All right, so the smash pot can go down to as low as a 100 pound rider and go up to as high as about a 275 pound rider. rider. This is last time I pulled any specs from, from Vorsprung, okay? They have 11 springs um, that you can go through. You might go through two or three sp springs. Um, if you need some help, you know, you can reach out to somebody like Mike at Full Flow Suspension, get them to do the work, give them all your information and they'll probably get dang close. You might need to go up or down. Maybe you charge a little harder than you thought, so you need a little stiffer spring. Maybe you don't charge as hard as you said and maybe you need a little softer spring. Um, the other thing is as your weight changes, you are gonna impact this and need to change it out. So um, be ready to change springs. They're not real expensive uh, and it's not hard to do. You can change the spring out on your own or you can take it in and get the, the spring changed out. It's not hard to change them. Um, we're talking about 20, 30 minutes. And you know, if you're not, you should be checking your air pressure and doing all those things anyway. So it's just a little bit more time and it gives you a more dialed bike. Um, and you can make those changes, you know, at home if you're gonna ride a different trail. Also this, you can start to adjust this bottom out. Say I go between, hey, I'm gonna go just ride around maybe some of the fun stuff in Auburn that's steep and bumpy. I'll lighten this up because I want as much travel that's as smooth as a fork as I can get. Hey, I'm gonna go charge the rocks in Downeyville or ride some of the stuff like in Martis or somewhere that's steep and nasty and got something hard in it. I'm gonna increase this. I want more bottom out resistance because I'm gonna be doing a lot more of this kind of behavior and I want the bike to perform and I, I don't want to be too low in this travel all the time. I want it to fight back sooner and get me back up, right? I also will adjust compression and rebound for that as well and I'll make those adjustments depending on where I'm gonna ride. Okay. So the other thing, one of the things Vorsprung does really well across their entire product line is improve a bike for a lighter rider. Any of their products have that potential. And this is one of them. The only downside to this is a lighter rider um, all depending on their rider skill set, you're adding enough weight that it could impact their riding sooner. Now, if they're very fit and they're very capable, don't worry about it, set it up, let them go rip. If they're not, you could impact their riding and that's that, you've, you've, you've made a heavier bike and the benefit didn't outweigh the weight disadvantage that they gained, okay? But you're always gonna make a bike better um, and you're gonna get, um, so heavier, 
Suspension is built around an average weight in general, right? The dampers, everything are set up for us average weighted human beings. Um, anything between that 155 and probably 185 weight range. That's that's what this stuff is. That's where the, that's where dampers and all that stuff are pretty much set up for. If you're heavier than that or lighter than that, you know you're putting in a lot more air, you're getting a harsher ride. If you're lighter than that, you got way too little air, you got all these things you've got to compensate for, and you're down having your dampers rebuilt and your shim stacks redone and all that stuff. Forsprung's done a great job of saying, hey, you throw this in, now you got a really nice spring for a real light rider. Hey, you can up that spring a lot and get really great behavior out of the fork if you're a 250 pound rider. And now you got a fork that just, it's pretty awesome. And it's gonna take the abuse. It's its gonna ride really well for you. So that's something to worry, To so that's something to really think about when, you know, if you're not the average rider, these can be amazing upgrades. If you're not the average weighted rider. It is right now, last I looked again, the only coil conversion on the market for 180 mil fork. I think that's pretty rad. You know, they, they allow you to get up into a pretty long travel system and, and be able to run like 180 mil on your 27.5 or now. Uh, I don't know if they make it for the Zeb, but if they do, that'd be cool because they got 180 mil on the Zeb. All right. Um, you can still adjust travel with this with internal spacers. So don't think of it as, oh, whatever length it is, I'm stuck. No, you can actually adjust this thing down to probably 130 or 140, depending on what, whatever your fork can do, um, it'll have it set up um, and just make sure you stay within the ranges of your fork, right? So this fork, 29 or 36, the max I can go is 170, which is where it's at. I think the minimum I can go is 140, I think. So um, that's about where you can go with this fork. The other thing that's really cool about using a a, a hydraulic bottom out system and I can tell you firsthand because I've used a pneumatic bottom out system on a different system is it pneumatic bottom out is super super harsh um, you when you hit it you know it it's air in a tight space that compresses really fast and by God you know you're up against it real quick this because it's uh, hydraulic is a lot smoother, really comfortable when it happens and you don't really notice it, which makes it a way better performing fork. Um, low maintenance, set it, forget it. Uh, and again, it's not a big weight increase. So who's this for? Let me go down, I got some great notes. I wanna go over this. You're not a hucker. You're a technical smasher. You like the technical rocky tracks. You're gonna do some drops, you're gonna, I mean, you got a bottom out control. You, you know this stuff still exists in your riding. But a lot of your riding is loose. You're, you want the most traction possible and your traction is your premium over weight. You're not trying to build the lightest bike, you're trying to build the fastest bike you can ride. You're trying to have the highest traction, highest performing bike you can build. This is the upgrade for you. It works exceptionally well. I have been on it again for a couple of years. I love this thing when I'm running it. Um, I go to air when I'm on jumpier tracks and I know I'm gonna do a lot of jumping and there's not a lot of technical going on. Uh, again, it doesn't take that long to change your fork out. So um, since I run identical forks and cut them, I, just, I got a system so I can just swap the fork in and out um, and not have a lot going on there. It takes not enough time that it matters. So if you have the ability, if you have one of these laying around and you wanna try it, I'd suggest it. It's really a rad upgrade. Um, it, it makes the bike perform at a much higher level uh, in the really technical, rocky, chunky, loose, gnarly terrain. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope this uh, gave you some more information than you had before about why you would ride a smash pot. And I look forward to seeing you out on the trails.